How's it going, everybody? It's Andy Timmons. I'm sitting here at the awesome Guitar Sanctuary in McKinney, Texas, and we're celebrating. Um, we have found a winner for the pedalboard giveaway that we did in conjunction with True Fire and the Guitar Sanctuary and all these awesome uh, pedal and gear manufacturers that I work with over the years. Starting with Daniel Steinhardt at, uh, at Gig Rig, who uh, supplied us with this awesome G2 switcher, which I've been using forever. The Exotic Company, of course, I've got the Signature BB preamp with, and I've got an RC booster on the board that I like a lot. Um, Josh Smith over at JHS with the awesome AT Plus pedal. Y'all know about that one. It's my favorite lead tone. Um, Sonic Research with the tuner I've been using for quite a while. Uh, the Carl Martin Company that makes my dual compressor, signature compressor. And of course, Timeline. I've been using the Strymon Timeline for a long time for my, for my delays. And Brian O'Million, who uh, put all the board together and uh, made all this possible as far as assembling everything and making it tidy and look nice. So what I thought we'd do today is... Before we send it off to the winner, we'll have to announce the name later. We do have a winner, but I don't have the name in front of me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna program it with a few of my favorite settings. I'm gonna go through each pedal and kind of give you an idea uh, again from scratch how I would come up with some some basic patches, right? Um, so let's let's dig in. I'm, I'm running everything today uh, straight into the uh, the front end of the Lone Star, including the timeline. Now the timeline a lot of times I also have run into the uh, effects loop. But because I'm using just the loud, clean channel, the, the clean channel on the Lone Star, we can run everything to the front of it. So that's how we're going to do it today. But the, uh, the guy who won the board, if he chooses to run that in the effects loop, that's cool too. But it should actually sound very similar and sound great. Um, so I've got the clean channel of the Lone Star set up. Bass uh, almost off, but everything kind of at noon. It's just kind of a good basic setting for this amp. Even though the effects loop isn't, isn't connected, it is switched on because it adds a, a slightly... Uh, a little bit more gain adds a stage of gain. So that's uh, switched on. No reverb on the amp right now. Though it comes with reverb. I want you to be able to hear uh, the echo as we turn it on, right? So let's dig in. Let's, let's get a basic clean sound. Um, essentially, any clean sound you ever hear me play with live uh, will be the Carl Martin straight into the Lone Star. So if I switch on, as I look at... Brian's got it nicely labeled here. The, the comp is in, in loop five, so... Here's the amp, uh, straight up, n nothing plugged into it, everything's bypassed with the G2. <laughs> Sounds nice, just a basic, basic clean tone. So that'll be our platform for setting up every tone that's going to come after. So let me switch on the comp. And traditionally how I've used the Carl Martin, the main, the main part of the compressor that I use is just... Just the, it's two channels. I can set up two completely different compression sounds. But the, what I love about the pedal is how, the, how it sounds with not much, not much compression, but just mainly as a boost. So. so if I switch it off, bypassed, it's a significant, uh, quite a significant volume boost. And I'm setting there's, there's too many, many trim pots here for response and threshold. I've got those straight up noon and just a little bit of compression, not much, just a little bit, but it's, it's really that front end boost I like. It just, it fattens up the tone. It makes it a bit bolder, a little bit punchier, but without, without too much too much compression, right? Now, if you know me like I think you do, you know I always have some echo on. So we're gonna add, um, since the, the, the timeline is in a loop on the G2, we can we can turn that on. I believe it's patch number 10, thanks to Brian's uh, off, awesome labeling. And this is uh, my, essentials, my essential settings, just on the dual delay setting at a two to three ratio. It would take me a while to get in and really tweak it, but that's the basic sound. A couple of delays. Set the mix up a little bit. Brian Meter, who's the uh, awesome uh, buddy here at the store, uh, once made the comment that you don't you you don't use delay as an effect. It's really part of your sound, and that's. That's a pretty accurate way of thinking about it because it's rarely off. It's always a component. So at, that's why I'm going to turn that on now at this early stage. Usually you might want that last. But because it's 
such a part of every tone that I'm going to dial in from here on. I'm just going to keep it on, right? So there you go. You can see with the, 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 the amount of repeats I have in there, it kind of acts as a, as a reverb in a way. It's just giving length and uh, duration to each, each note. That'll be our basic clean patch. That's clean, uh, patch number one. Patch number two. What I'm going to do is add to that. I'm going to I'm going to switch on loop five and loop ten. That's how easy this G2 is to work with. It's fantastic. Once I've said something, I don't even have to save anything. It just it that's the way it stays until you change it again. Then it'll, it'll modify your settings. So if we go back to patch one now, it's our clean. <laughs> point out it's very uh it's extremely uh flexible you can also use it to switch channels on your amp you can switch it with midi i'm not messing with any of that today this is as simple of a setup as we can have for now i, I still don't even use my timeline with midi i could because it's it's capable of so much but i use two sounds and I'll, I'll program the other sound here in a second which is the slap back echo but it's got my uh let me save that actually let me save that patch i think i'll hold that down right Save it? Okay, save it. Complete. Um, so now we're gonna we're gonna set up a patch now that's got our uh, the Karl Marx still gonna stay on, but I'm gonna add the RC booster. And one of the things I love about the RC booster right now is that I can dial in a little bit of additional push into the front end, but I can also taper the low end a little bit. It's got bass and treble frequencies that you can modify. And I've been dipping the, the, the bass pretty far down again because there's so much beef coming from the Lone Star, even with the bass rolled off, it's a real fat amp, right? So this allows me to add that, so what patches that? That's in, that's in loop two. Switch it on, so the pedal's on there, now I can open up the, the, the patch, loop two. Sounds great already, so I've got everything, everything's at noon, essentially, except the bass, which I'm rolling back a bit. So if I go back to, Patch one, just the just the just the compressor hitting the front end. Now if I hit patch two. A little bit more push once again for Sounds good when you dial the dial the volume back, right? Okay, so now let's set up a patch that includes the BB, which I've traditionally used for a bit more gain. It's a bit, it's a, it's got a bit of compression in in the tone, right? And uh, so we'll set up a third patch. I'm gonna keep, of course, the delay on, and I'll, I'm gonna hit the front end of that compressor with this, and this is the BB's in track in number four. So here's without without the BB. So this now is just essentially going back to just the compressor and the timeline. But now if we get the BB on. Now we're into, well, BB is, is, stands for BB, Blues Boy, right? Uh, it's meant to have that kind of bluesy breakup. <laughs> Already, it's kind of the tone that I want. I might dip a little bass out of there.
three stages so far. We've got the cleanest. There's, there's one more level of, of gain that I might want to tap into quite a bit, and that would be um, switching on the JHS pedal. And now, as I, uh, I built the, the two mid-gain tones based with uh, the, the Carl Martin compressor, I'm going to take that out and just have a patch set up <clears throat> with a delay, and then find the loop that's got the uh, JHS, which is loop three. And so that's on. <laughs> So again, this is another pedal where getting the controls kind of straight up. It's got a three mode switch, which is emulating, essentially it's emulating like a 100 watt, 50 watt, 25 watt, different levels of, co of compression, I guess. I keep it in the middle setting, which is the most, uh, the most open, it's the 100 watt setting. And I'm going to keep the, the air and the, and the treble kind of at noon for now. There's another stage of gain, we'll get into that in a second, but I might normally set Everything at noon except the game where I might have anywhere from like 2 to 3 o'clock. Let's set, set it right there. So here's, here's just the, the clean amp. So when I'm setting up a lead sound, one of the most important things that I'm trying to achieve is enough gain to have it be singing and sustaining but I don't want it to, to be too buzzy. The more distortion you add, you generally get a, some, some brittle top end, right? And initially I'm hearing a bit of that. So the brilliant thing about this pedal is it's really fine tunable in the top end with the air and the treble. So I'm gonna back both of those off because it sounded a little bright to me. So I'm gonna back those down a little bit and see what I can get. Right <laughs> to mention early on and it's the octafuzz thank you for that so sorry but my, my brazilian brothers down in uh down in sao paulo brazil a company called g and i and they make a wonderful pedal that's been a staple for me for a long time called the octafuzz which is essentially um it's essentially like a, a version of the early octavia that Jimi hendrix uh made so famous in the 60s that that kind of a purple haze lead tone right and i'll use that i, I, I would rarely use it on its own but i, I commonly use it um, in front of, and sometimes after. Where is the, where is the, the oh, the fuzz loop on quick. Because of the fuzz, I want to put, I want to put this octafuzz before my lead sound. Let me set it up. I think if we just start at noon on it, we can, we can taper from there. So let's do a number, another loop, loop five. So we're going to have 10 and three, which is the JHS, the timeline. Now we're going to add loop one, which is the fuzz. So my apologies to Sidney Cavario, my brother down in, uh, down in Brazil for sending up this pedal. Great company. I've done, I've done many clinic tours for them in Brazil, and that's what actually led to that Bossa Nova record that Sydney and I did. So, anyway, hope to see you guys down there soon in my, my in my Brazilian family. Uh, okay, so now this is a the the quirky thing about the Octavia circuit is that generally it works best on the neck pickup and from the 12th fret above. So here here is again here's the lead sound that we have. We got <laughs>
Gonna brighten it up a little bit. So it just gives a crazy amount of cool vibe to your to your sound. I used it on uh, this exact pedal I used on this this solo from a song called Winterland, which. Uh, pointed out that it commonly isn't used below the 12th fret you can get away with some but you can hear it gets pretty crappy down there but above that 12th fret that's where you get that's where you get a lot of the why that is such a, a premier example of that of that circuit I'm not I have no idea why because I owned a lot of different uh, you know replicas and I have an old Roger Meyer reissue that they made in the 90s which sounds incredible it's very volatile though very inconsistent this one always performs great for me so that's why it's been on the pedal board so long so let's do let's do one more patch this is we're it's just five patches but that's essentially the palette that I draw from when I'm doing gigs, those are, those are the main tones. And that's why we chose these pedals as uh, elements of this essential pedal board. But let's do a country chicken picking uh, setting here. So the way I do that, um, oh, one of the other cool features about the G2 is that if you, if you have um, pedals that have a quarter inch TRS uh, remote capability, that's how I switch the channels on. You can do it physically by doing the select here, but you can also do it from a, rem a remote switch from the, from the G2. So I'm going to set up a pedal, I mean a patch here on the G2. We'll put the echo on and just, and just, the, uh, just the comp, and that's in loop 5. But I'm going to switch the channels and go to now what I would consider more of a, a traditional usage of a compressor pedal. Like I said, that, that the main channel is how I usually use it with very little compression. But for a country chicken picking tone, you might want to get a bit more grind and crunch, right? So we're going to go to that, to that side of it and crank up the compression. been doing a coil tap on my on my humbucker pickups is so if I'm playing this guitar uh, generally a bridge pickup humbucker um, trying to get a grindy clean tone is not going to be your best thing not that you can't do that but if I want to get more of a strat telly so that's the single coil if I, if I here's the untapped I'm hearing just too much attack and not enough of the top end but When you, if I disengage the pedal now, the more compression you add, the more gain you might have to make up. So I, if I crank the compression up like that, the cool thing is now I can make up the, the, the volume loss by, by cranking the volume a little bit. to some of those really great like if you think when I think of Vox like jangly good power pop clean tone <laughs> single coil on the bridge and, and hit it with that compressor like that it's golden right so but now if we're going for the country chicken picket thing we need a different type of delay and what we're going to do is set up a quick patch on here that's going to be just a vintage style tape echo right if i go to the here to what's going to be the best you think the d tape we'll do d tape and set up a, a short there's that single quote. We're gonna short set a short delay. We're gonna start about 110 with one repeat. Let me see what I got here. 
Oh shit. Well, I'll, I'll save it a second. <laughs> Yeah. So around 110 milliseconds, I might go. Let me see what it sounds like a little, a little longer. A little try. Okay, you can you kind of season to taste depending on your tempo. It didn't have to be in time, but so I'll do that. A little more mix. So I'll save that. If I hit save. And then I want to hit this button. And okay, and that saves it, great. So now I've got two delay settings and that's really all I use on the timeline. I've got my, my, my dual delay and a... And so I would use that for... Uh, uh, patiently awaiting his awesome board and with the sounds already kind of programmed Brian's got it documented and uh, anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video I always enjoy playing for you all so thanks for uh, continuing uh, awesomeness go practice go play the gear the gear matters when we got to play too right so enjoy the, enjoy the journey <laughs> <laughs>